in 1921, the famous Blood Circus is set ablaze by the director's brother, resulting in a high number of casualties among the audience and performers, including the arsonist himself. He is recognized as guilty and sentenced to the electric chair. Eight years after the tragedy, the former director, Vlad Pretescu, summons the survivors of the circus to the secluded family villa. He proposes the revival of the circus, a proposition welcomed by all, especially by the clown Oliver, who spent time in a mental institution due to the trauma he endured, desires to resume his life from where it was interrupted. After the initial enthusiasm, things take a wrong turn. Vlad appears absent, teetering on the edge of madness, and none of the former circus artists are the same as they once were. As the night progresses, old memories begin to resurface, and poor Oliver seems to once again become a victim of his psychological issues. What he sees and hears, how much of it is real? The story of Vlad Circus' descend into madness is dark and oppressive, and it alone manages to create a continuous sense of discomfort, successfully keeping the player engaged thanks to a well-developed cast of characters each with their own depth and complexity. Vlad Circus is essentially a graphic adventure, even though the direct controls and the presence of some action sequences might suggest otherwise. Controlling Oliver, you will need to explore Vlad's gloomy villa and its surroundings, engaging in various tasks such as searching for objects, especially keys, solving puzzles, and occasionally engaging in combat. In some parts of the villa, there are indeed monstrous creatures that will attack on sight, but they leave it up to the player whether to fight them, avoid them, or temporarily make them disappear by drinking a medicinal tonic. The combat system offers two difficulty levels, but it's essentially quite basic, and most of the time, it's more advantageous to avoid the enemies. Eliminating them doesn't provide any benefit, and shortly after they return to attack again, making them more of a nuisance than a threat. Honestly, the puzzles aren't anything special, and most of the time, you'll simply be searching for items around the villa. However, there are some interesting finds, such as the ability to relive some of Oliver's memories in search of clues. The diary is particularly useful in this case, where Oliver records all the information gathered during the game, including the location of items you might be forced to leave behind, since the inventory can only hold a limited number. This mitigates backtracking to some extent, although it remains a challenge, especially because Oliver is rather slow and can only run for short distances before he stops to catch his breath. Despite these flaws, Vlad Circus, descend into madness, is able to keep players glued to the screen, as I mentioned earlier. The game offers around 4 hours of gameplay. The game's graphics, along with the audio, significantly contribute to the oppressive atmosphere that permeates Vlad Circus. The environments are carefully designed, and the characters, despite the few pixels, are well drawn and characterized, especially in the portraits during dialogues. The design of the monsters is less successful, as there are few of them and they appear rather mundane. The game doesn't feature voice acting, but the soundtrack is of good quality and intervenes during the story's key moments, leaving room for sound effects for most of the time. The sounds of rain, thunder, moans, and strange noises will accompany us during our descent into madness. Despite its occasionally imperfect and naive design, Vlad Circus manages to captivate players thanks to its excellent atmosphere and its characters, which urge you to go further, deeper into the abyss of madness toward the conclusion. <laughs>